Oh my god, that is hot, mate. It's actually very hot. Too hot? Too hot, too hot, but very hot. This is cuisine in Pakistan. Hello friends and welcome back to another episode of Cuisine in Pakistan. This time we're continuing our culinary journey through Lahore. We head out into the city at night to bring you an essence of its incredible atmosphere, beginning with some extreme spice level chicken. chicken <laughs> chef. Years of experience, you see, training. I've lectured this moment, I can't even turn the thing up. Hey, 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 please, please, please. Hey, you see that? Hey, you see that? Hey, you see that? Hey, you see that? Right, ladies and gentlemen, we're here. This is Arif. What's Arif Arif is the name of the restaurant. We're literally just opposite Bancha Mosque, which is a very uh, historic place here in Lahore. And we've heard about this place, they make the best dawa chicken, which is a very traditional Pakistani dish, very popular here in Lahore. And you can see the way they make it, a lot of love and attention on this massive sort of basin. They've got the gas firing, the heat is up. They use a special sauce, which consists of uh, yogurt and some spices. Hell of a lot of green chilli, absolutely lather it in the green chilli. And then there's a lot of oil there too, and you can see they literally just come here Keep basically messing around with the chicken, keep mixing it, keep making sure it cooks evenly and ultimately you make the ultimate chicken. Us South Asians might have developed a tolerance for spice over the years so arguably I was stitching up our Egyptian friend Mahmoud by getting him to try this. But he appeared to handle it alright. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. I was very worried about the chili, I'm not gonna lie. There's a lot of chili as well. But you just sweep out of the way. It's still very hot. Oh my god, it's hitting me in my ear. <laughs> oh my days. That's hot, mate. Woo. Woo. That's my oh picture. my god, that's hot, mate. That's actually very hot. Too hot? Too hot, too hot, but very hot. <sighs> I think our friend, the yogurt is going to come into play here, mate. <laughs> our I friend, yogurt. yogurt friend. I didn't even have the chili, you know that? Just the chicken. It's done, mate. <coughs> well, at least he started like a champ. My turn next. Alright guys, Tower Chicken's here. It's super, super spicy, absolutely drizzling, all sorts of green chilli. By the way, the, the bread here is just this massive wad of loads of different roti. Really, really thin, really, really fresh, quite big in surface area. Um, it's quite wafery actually, almost wafer thin, which is delicious. Um, good texture. Anyway, let's get a little bit of this chicken. Oh my god, that is super, super tender and juicy. Immediately, you can tell. Bit of the green chili, of course. Dip it in the yogurt. Dip in the yogurt? Here we go. Oh, is that a problem? <laughs> That's a cheat code, big man. That's a cheat code? That's a cheat code, but it's fine. It's fine. I'm put it down. It's fine. Start again. Oh, you know what? I will not have anyone testing my manhood. My manhood when it comes to spice. No cheat code this time. Alright. Very spicy. Very, very spicy. And actually, there's an initial kick, but there's a long lasting kick as well. The way they cook it, they ensure the chicken really encapsulates all the spice. It stores it. So as you bite it later, there's a long lasting effect of spice. So even now, as I'm speaking, it's almost getting hotter and hotter in my mouth. But honestly, it's absolutely delicious. The flavors are ridiculous. Got a little bit of that special sauce on there, that sauce which has uh, yogurt in it, which is supposed to cool things down. 
the, the yogurt on the side, absolute necessity. But genuinely, Tava chicken, first time trying this, this is absolutely intrinsic here to Lahore. Very, very popular. And we were told one of the most popular dishes across this city. So we're super, super happy to try it. And I've got to say, this is delicious. The meal we just had was absolutely fire. So many green chilies in there, as you saw. And it leaves a burning sensation in your stomach as soon as you're finished. There's no surprise, therefore. Not only is it served with yogurt sauce on the side, mint sauce to help cool things down, right at the end, immediately, they bring you a pot of this good stuff, kheer. Kheer is obviously a, a type of pudding that's very common across the Indian subcontinent. Uh, but it basically consists of milk, sugar, or jaggery, and some rice. Uh, but basically, it's a very common pudding, and actually, this is meant to help put out the flames, the fire are currently in my stomach after that Dava chicken. Unbelievable. Cold. This has been in the fridge. The terracotta pot helps to retain that temperature. And the consistency is so smooth. It's literally like a creamy jam. That's what it is in terms of consistency. And it tastes delicious. This is exactly what you need. It's the antidote to that super, super spicy chicken. Mm. All right, we've literally just left our Tawa chicken place. And next door? It's Fire City Fire. No, it's Pajan. No. For Baja. God's sake, man. For God's sake, man. Sorry? Unbelievably. Delicious. Delicious. Really, really nice. We're going to this one as well. This is the best pie. One of the best pie. What is this one? This is the oldest pie in the region. Really? Yeah. Oldest in the region? Goat trotter. Goat trotter. Goat? Goat trotter. Okay. Goat pie. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. 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 Very delicious. Very delicious. Yeah. How old? One of the best and one of the oldest pie in the region. You can't okay. find any, uh, that kind of taste anywhere in Pakistan. Wow. Wow, yes, wow, you wow, must wow. go for that. But this perfect timing. You recommend it by the locals. I do recommend. Thank, I do you. Thank recommend. you so much. Thank, Thank you very so much. much. Are you from Lahore? You're a local? No, I'm from Islamabad. You're from Islamabad? Okay, yeah. but you live I, here. I've been there uh, like 20 years back yeah. and I got this food over here. Yeah. And fine, actually. So you had this 20 years ago? Yeah, 20 years ago. No way, and it tastes the same? It's been right, uh, I think, for more than 30, 40 years. Wow, and it still tastes as good? You must try it. Okay. Thanks for the tip. Thank you. Thank you. Well, there you go. There you go. You can't really have a better endorsement than that. We've perfect literally timing. just finished the perfect timing. our chicken and we've been told a local has stopped and told us that we've got to try the pyre here. It's apparently the best pyre around, apparently the oldest, one of the most established places as well. So, you know what that means. We're going to walk over, literally move over to next door and bring you <laughs> outrageous, gentlemen. Outrageous. The Baja City Pyre. Fire is something that I wanted to try from the moment we stepped into Pakistan because it's one of the most delicious dishes around there. It's literally trotter. In this particular case, it's goat trotter and they basically slow cook the foot of the goat until that jelly-like, gelatinous skin and flesh almost falls off the bone. They slow cook it on there and then they mix it with a particular stew that's got a lot of spices in it. Uh, it's a bit dark, it's like a dark red tomato colour but it's got loads of different flavours and it's quite thick. Uh, almost like a gravy. The origins of this dish are a bit more sort of um, contested. Some people say it's a mix of sort of Central Asian cuisine and Indian subcontinental food. They say that the dish was perfected uh, in the Mughal times uh, in places like Lucknow and Hyderabad. Um, and uh, in Lahore as well. So this is the place to be when you want uh, fire. This is, it's also quite a common breakfast dish as well. So just opposite where they serve up the actual fire, they've got the naan station. I find this process honestly mesmerizing. What they do, I don't know what they do. I think they just whack the naan. You can see the breads like in the tandoori oven. It's in the tandoor. It's stuck on there somehow. And it's honestly, it's actually... That takes years of science. skill actually. To master, to master the tandoor is not an easy one. It's very, very hot as well. One slip up and things can go wrong. But these guys do it so effortlessly. And uh, the one thing I love about this naan, actually, the naan looks a little bit different. It looks a bit flatter. It actually looks closer to Central Asian bread. It's less fluffy than standard naan. 
and what's amazing is they've got intricate patterning they've got a little um, utensil that they stab the sort of naan with before they stick it into the tandoor and you've got a lovely intricate piece of working there here it is look my <laughs> picked it up there he is genius what on that man I think you're about to fall asleep in the, <laughs> by the food we're having, mate. <laughs> that was actually me trying to show that I'm very happy, but my right eye started sagging a little bit. Demonstrating, revealing how exhausted I am. This has been an intense food tour, but we never stop. We never stop. The naan has arrived. The paya has arrived. And by the way, this naan is, is actually unlike any naan I think I've tried before in that it's very very sort of crunchy it's very quite it's quite flat quite tough oh, it's definitely closer to a central asian naan than it is a pakistani naan but you know i'm not complaining naan let's go for just the paya sauce first before we get to the meat mm. oh. Honestly, I just, I don't want to say anymore. <clears throat> I don't want to say anymore in a way that doesn't come out as pure envy. Envy for anyone who gets to live in Pakistan. Just because how glorious the food is. The food scene here is unbelievable. And that first bite has just reminded me of precisely that. That stew is so warm, so comforting. It starts off somewhat not that spicy at all but later it builds on you the spice builds on you You've got a little bit of a tomatoey taste there's clearly oil in there but all in all it's not that thick not as thick as a sort of nihari it's a bit more watery but it's so so comforting i'm gonna go in now and get a little bit of meat remember this is the trotter so a lot of the meat there is is pure pure gelatinous fat so let's get a little bit of that off Oh my god, it's very, very hot by the way, so... Ooh! There's actually not really much meat on here. They put the pyre in just because of the flavour, the sheer flavour that it brings, but... There's no harm in having a little bit of jelly. It's jelly, it's soft. It's putting up a bit of a fight, I must say. I like to use tuna, it's very, very hot, that's the main thing. Alright, with that lovely bread. Oh man, that is delicious. The paya is so, so jelly-like. It's so jelly-like that it's almost sticky as well. It's like sticky and jelly-like, but super, super delicious and comforting. You can just tell it's got so many calories in it. So much fat there, but the flavor from the actual paya, the trotter, is delicious. It adds a whole new take to things. Honestly, it's a, it's a part of the animal that I think is quite distinct in the way it tastes. And you know, this cafe is super local for the locals here. Everyone needs to sort of give this one a go. I am definitely going to come back here again. Now, having spent so much time in Pakistan, it was perhaps no surprise that the Egyptian liability that was with me began craving some of his own food again. We found ourselves scouring the streets of Lahore for a taste of his home. Okay, so we, we, so we want, uh, I was ready to give up, but somehow we came across a miracle. Okay, thank you. What have you just done? Oi. One Ori Kunafa and one Cream Kunafa, yes. Oi, what, what's going on here? <laughs> I have, mean, there's what, a lot to explain here, mate. What have you just done? There's a lot to explain here. Basically, um, we heard that Lahore, there's a Kunafa scene in Lahore. No idea about the history of it. Do you know about the history of it? Because I, I have no idea. Heard of, we just heard that Kunafa is a popular dessert in Lahore. Don't know. Never heard of that. Anyway, we're so desperate for it. We looked up the top rated Kunafa place in Lahore. And they brought us <laughs> right here. To a house. To a house. To a so obviously a house in a residential a residential house. Obviously we start we tried calling the place. No one answered. So I literally walked up to the place, to the house, that door right there, and I started knocking. A lady, a very, very friendly lady, kind of came up to the balcony and, and asked me what do I want. 
I was like, I want a kunafa. I'm here for a kunafa. I'm here to try the Lahore style kunafa. And uh, yeah, basically I took her WhatsApp number. <laughs> I'm not sure what's that. She gave me the, uh, the menu and we just ordered an Oreo kunafa, which I've never seen before in my life. I guess that's the Lahore South Asian twist to it. I just saw a cat running across there. Um, and a cream kunafa, which I've tried before, but let's see if it's, it tastes any different. But I'm very, very excited. I've never done this before in my life. Uh, and there's a guy at someone's house. There's someone chasing me on WhatsApp telling me what's your delivery address. He can't actually believe oh <laughs> that we're outside the house. As if the stars could align any further for homesick Egyptian Mahmoud, we bumped into the owner of the business who explained his inspiration behind this dish. They are the best friends of my wife. Uh, they are uh, from Egypt. Egypt. And uh, <laughs> uh, my wife learned from that. Oh, here we go. The sharbat, the syrup, this is the cream, and this is the Oreo. I'm very excited to see what Oreo is going to look like, so open up. Very, very excited. Oh my days, that looks like diabetes. <laughs> I am so excited. Do you know what? This, alongside another in incident that took place on the way to Lahore, has reminded me of just why I absolutely love the subcontinent so much and that is because of the diaspora. This region always produces so many people that move, migrate to different parts of the world. They pick up stuff from that part of the world, they merge it with their own culture. Now we're basically trying what's a very traditional Middle Eastern dessert, hitherto probably unheard of in Pakistan and the subcontinent. Now we're starting to see the gentleman that runs this place, that owns this establishment, worked in Saudi for nine years. He learned about the kanafa, he tried it, he perfected it, bought it back, and now he's basically doing this incredible business from his home. This place is rated as the top kanafa in all of Lahore. Enough chit chat. I've got a spoon on this. This is the vermicelli um, kanafa with a little bit of Oreo. <laughs> Good, isn't it? Looks good, mate. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. It looks good. That is absolutely delicious. I've got a lot of issues with kanafa. It is my favorite dessert. So, my mum makes it actually similar to this. So, I'm just gonna put a bit of the shadabata on. And this sure. is literally diabetes and a bite. But I am buzzing for it. I'm actually buzzing to try this. Mm. Oh, oh, oh. 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 Oh my god. Oh my days. Mmm. <laughs> Mate. Are you happy? That is so freaking delicious. So delicious. Oh my god. Let's get the cream on, like I said. This, honestly, this is for me, it's childhood. This. The cream vermicelli kanafa. <laughs> I'm literally so happy. And that brings us to the end of this episode of Cuisine in Pakistan. Join us next time when we head to Islamabad to find our old friend from university and begin exploring his motherland in the Khaybar Pakhtunkhwa region. See you then.